three good wins in the Premier League. What do you think was missing tonight? Some freshness and uh, some quality in the final set. Um, we generated a lot of entries in the final set, but uh, without real big, big chances. Uh, a lot of a lot of situation, but we lacked the last pass or the timing or the last shots. Uh, and probably we had to generate more to to be able to win that game. Understand that there's a, a, a tough run of fixtures at the moment. They come thick and fast, don't they? But did you expect more from your players? Did you want to see more from them? Well, I would like to see. I won a win today and, and scored a few goals and, and it didn't happen. There were moments as well that fatigue paid a big uh, moment when we started to give very difficult balls away that we are completely free, give the ball away and allow the transitions to Palace, which is uh, probably what they do best. And, uh, and just, you know, I cannot fault the spirit, the fight that they put in. They tried at the last, last minute with the chance that we had on the, on the wide free kick, but uh, it wasn't enough today. How much did you miss Kieran Tierney? He's been so influential lately. Yeah, he's a real threat and the way we are playing and, and the way we attack on that left side is um, a really important player. We didn't have him, he's injured and uh, we have to find other solutions. Do you expect to have him back for the next game? I don't know, depends how he evolves. Uh, he's going to have an MRI scan tomorrow and see how he is. Understandably, Crystal Palace, you know what to expect from a Roy Hodgson team. Did you expect a performance like that today? Absolutely. Uh, he's done it all through career <laughs> very successfully. Uh, that's why they beat a lot of big teams in recent years, uh, the way they've done it. And, um, and again, we knew the plan, we knew what we had to do, but the execution and the quality today wasn't enough to win the game. You tried to implement some changes and bring players off the bench. Do you feel it exposes a, a lack of depth that you have at the moment? No, but a lot of Premier League teams are in the same position. I think we lost four players in the last week with injuries. Uh, this is going to happen. Some others that haven't played much have to step in. It's what it is. The schedule is crazy. It's still going to be crazy. I'm not going to change it, so we have to adapt. OK, Mikhail, thank you very much. Thank you. Hector and all, how difficult did Crystal Palace make that for you today? Well, um, they did defend really well with loads of players. And... Um, we tried to break that uh, low block. I feel that little spark, that little bit of uh, creativity uh, or just like that shot or chance that you can get sometimes uh, what's missing today. And um, we can't foul the team for the, for the effort. We tried really hard uh, defensively, offensively. Um, today we didn't have that little bit of luck that we needed. And um, obviously credit to them. They did really, really well as well. They knew what they were coming here for. Um, they are a team that in the counter attack, they can be really, really dangerous. They play their game and uh, we go away with a point. What do you put the lack of spark down to, do you think? Well, I think um, when you play against teams that uh, they defend with so many players, sometimes uh, the spaces are really short. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to play balls in behind because there's not much space. And as I say, sometimes it just uh, takes uh, one moment in the game, you know, to just open the score. And then once the once the game's one nil or something, then the spaces come up because the other team is trying to trying to score a goal. And uh, you know, we didn't we didn't score the chances we had in the first half. So then we knew that we had to suffer to break them down. And you know, it wasn't our day to do that today. Personnel-wise, do you feel like you missed the likes of Kieran Tierney today? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think we do, we do uh, miss every single player when they're not on the pitch. You know, we also have like great players coming back, and I think NC did a great job again, um, filling in uh, such a versatile player. Um, but it's true that Kieran also was enjoying a very good form, you know, and um, we did miss probably that on the left side. But um, we have very talented players in many areas that can come in, and um, you know, we're not a team that we we ball down to just uh, one player. We need to find ways to be creative to break away other teams um, whatever the challenge they they give us and um, we need to keep improving on that a couple of big saves from your keeper especially in the first half today had a good game yeah uh, Ben is uh, is a great goalkeeper um, he, he always has like two three saves that really saves us every single every single game and um, you know I think uh, we had our chances in the other end as well and um, yeah I mean we're happy to go away with a clean sheet I think in, in that sense we're improving uh, and not just from the keeper the, the, the whole team in the in the last few uh, minutes of the game there was a counter attack and you could see like the whole team was running back no matter what so I think um, there's positives to it um, as I say like the clean sheet but a uh, long way to go for us still is there a sense of disappointment in the dressing room at the moment among your teammates? Yeah, of course, because also uh, we've been enjoying uh, winning lately. Uh, we know that we're doing everything we can. We're working.
working really hard, we're doing what the boss is telling us to do. And um, but sometimes football games are like this, you know. Uh, you can kind of win all of them, and um, we are in a part of a process. We feel like we understand each other on the pitch and the way that the coach wants us to play uh, more and more. And then sometimes it's just down to that final final shot or the final decision. And today we were as good in that in that situation. And and yeah. How do you get it back before the next game? That spark that you've had, Sorry? how do you get it back? Um, well, I think uh, it's just, uh, we just need to keep going, you know, keep trying. I mean, it's not, it's not a thing of like, of like we have it or we don't have it. Like, um, you know, against Chelsea, we score three goals. Against West Brom, we score four. So we have it in us, you know. Um, it's just like... Um, Sometimes uh, different teams propose different challenges that you gotta overtake, and I think we we not only need to think about us. We need to see that Crystal Palace did a really really good game. They defended really good. They were really aggressive. Um, they were tactically uh, very compact, and it's also credit to them as well. Okay, Hector, thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. A couple of interesting points made by Hector Bella in there. Uh, one thing he spoke about was not having enough space to get in behind Crystal Palace. For that one reason alone, is it a bit dangerous for Arsenal to rely too much on the, the young shoulders of an Emil Smith Rowe, for example, to try and find those gaps? Yeah, I think so. I think he offers Arsenal a different dynamic, but today I think they cut off the supply to him very yeah. well. Milivojevic, you know, Coyote in there doing that, and also MacArthur doing that in there. I think that they cut off the supply to him. He was trying to get in those positions in between the lines, but, you know, I think it's a positive thing that he's in there because I think it changes the dynamic of Arsenal. Ian was saying in the first half, you know, he makes those runs that no one else was making from that position, mm. and I think that's why Arsenal are a different side. But, again, you can't just rely on such young players to bring that. you ha And they brought on Pepe tonight. Again, didn't do enough. You know, I don't think he offers enough to Arsenal. You've got the likes of Aubameyang and Lacazette. We mentioned before Lacazette, how often he doesn't touch the ball. Mm. It's not good enough. You know, you need to come and find the ball. If it's not coming to you, you've got to find the ball, especially as a key player for Arsenal. So a lot of responsibility on the young players, which I think they can handle, mm -hmm. but the other players need to step up more. That's the danger, isn't it? Because the young, the energy, the drive the youngsters have brought since they have been introduced by Mikel Arteta, if it doesn't work for them, where next does Mikel Arteta go, perhaps? Well, what you've got to do is you've got to hope that um, the way he's trying to play, and you can see it, and I, I go back to the goal against West Brom, the second goal, because we haven't seen it for such a long time in an Arsenal, in an Arsenal team, and it was nice, one-touch, sharp play, and you heard Hector Bellerin in that interviews say we didn't quite have that spark, that little sharpness. That just wasn't there today. And yes, you say the, the young guys have come in and they've given that exuberance and that, that enthusiasm. But then after a while, like, like Leanne says, people are going to stop the supply. You do need then the, the more experienced players to then really, really get themselves involved in the game, really push the guys forward, taking more chances, passing the ball in areas where yeah, it might get cut out, but if it doesn't, then you can maybe get into the, that quick play, what, what Arsenal are capable of. And you just didn't see it today. It was, a very, it was very lethargic in the way it was, it was um, played today. It was one of the best things about watching it was like was, was Xhaka. You know what I mean? One minute it was unbelievable, next minute it was calamitous. Xhaka cam. You know what I mean? Xhaka cam we need to have, me and Leanne was saying. But it was one of those situations where now you're kind of happy with the with the nil-nil draw, but you're hoping for the next game we play with maybe Tierney coming back, mm. um, you know, maybe Gabriel Martinelli. We're not sure if he's going to be coming back, but a little bit more impetus, a little bit more pace, thrust might get them going again. And as Bellerin mentioned there in his interview, how much did Arsenal miss Kieran Tierney tonight? Yeah, massively, I think. You know, I don't want to put massive responsibility on one player, but his service into the box is fantastic. The runs that he makes, and I think Saka also missed him with the regards to, you know, the overlapping play they usually have. I think if this is Tierney, that's going in without a shadow of a doubt right onto Lacazette's head, you know, and that's what happens when you play a left, a right-sided, uh, right-footed player yeah. on the left-hand side. You have to be adaptable. If that's me in this position, I think you've got to come back inside on your right foot. Although these guys are professional footballers, you are going to be more dominant on one side. And I think Maitland-Niles in the second half had a couple of good runs, didn't mm. he? Got a shot off and stuff like that. But I do think you can't put all the responsibility on tonight on Tierney not playing, but I do think it changes the dynamic of even Lacazette and Aubameyang's runs. Should we be putting... More such expectation on one player. Should one player make such a difference? Not well, to one, be featuring, though. Well, one player does make a, a, such a difference. And I think it's a bit of a worry because you take him out of the team and that side doesn't function. Yeah. And when we're talking about the way Kieran Tierney gets up and down that left-hand side, we're talking about for the full 90 minutes, he never stops. And this is why you look at 
someone like Aubameyang today didn't quite get the chances that he normally gets because Kieran Tierney, Tierney is normally flashing things in and around the box. That didn't happen today from either side, really, and in the, in the same amount of mm. crosses that come in when Kieran Tierney's playing. But, you know, it's, it has to come from somewhere else. It has to... You know, I think that the, the set pieces today, when you consider Arsenal have a set-piece coach, the balls that were in, what I saw Saka putting in were very good balls. I don't think they were being attacked very well. Yeah. And those are the things as well where when it's not quite going for you when you're trying to play your game, and try, you've got to find another way. We've got a set-piece coach for those reasons. I think with Tierney as well tonight, I think they missed his leadership. I know he's not the captain, but he's almost like the captain without the armband. And I think that he brings Arsenal alive somehow. And I know I mentioned Bruno Fernandes before and the impact he has on Manchester United. But I think Tierney is very similar when he plays. You know, he loves, you can tell he loves playing for Arsenal. Energy, Every single game he plays for Arsenal, it's like he's his last game. And it's refreshing to see. And I think that's what they miss the most tonight. Not just his delivery, but his leadership. Mm. And you think he's captain material, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. I've said it from the first few games. He, he, he plays, he's got a leader quality about the way he plays. He leads by example in the way he plays. And what he, the way he plays, it drags you through, drags the rest of you through. Uh, we saw Palace shade the chances at the end of the first half. It meant that Arsenal had to come out distinctly improved in the second 45. Did they shade the second half for you, though, Ian? Chances? They had a few chances, but I still thought that, um, like I said, I thought they were going to come out a little bit even more intense because there was so much, I believe, that they didn't do in the first half. And... When you looked at it, yes, they came at Palace a little bit, but Palace always, for me, seemed like they were in control. You know, you look at how many bodies they've got around the box. This is what Palace do yeah. with that low block. They're not going to give you the opportunity. That's a very good, ex good chance from, from Hector. But at the same time, you look at the Palace, look at them there. They're all, you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're in there, they're, their bodies are getting away. The great play from Maitland Niles, but then the shot's pretty tame. But again, there's so many bodies there. He's got so much to do. In the end, he hasn't got the energy I to get a proper well, shot off. I think as well, they just seem to lack a bit of conviction. You know, Maitland-Niles has done fantastically well there, but the shot isn't good enough. Hector had a good opportunity. You know, I think if Arsenal had a little bit more quality tonight, they would have gone on to win the game. But Crystal Palace actually had the better chances during the game. And yeah. as you said before, we couldn't quite believe there was 23 opportunities on goal, which I can't quite remember mm. about five of them being great opportunities. We saw it in Ketier at the end, you know, had that header. But is that really a chance? You know, it was a pretty flat game at some time. It looked a bit like a pre-season friendly at times. Yeah, a point away from home at Arsenal as well. How was that going for you? Yeah, um, we take it. I think we put in a good performance. We worked hard. Um, we showed our quality on the ball as well, so it's a good point to take. You created a lot of chances, one especially with Tompkins from the free kick. How difficult was that to watch? It came so close. Yeah, it was so close. Those are the type of chances that if they go in, it's a different game. But again, we played we played well and we worked hard and we, we got a deserved point. Christian Benteke as well came very close when you threaded him through. We saw your reaction for that one. Yeah, <laughs> these type of games, you need a, a chance to go in and it's difficult because you, you, you go long spells to fight the ball. But again, it's a, it's a great performance, I think. How difficult did Arsenal make it for you? as well because you kind of traded between spells yeah definitely they're, they're a great team and they've got loads of quality um, I think with the type of players that they have you have to always be alert and keep working hard and I think we, we did that today you've got a tough run of games really Arsenal away and now Manchester City so how important was a draw here today to build on that for City next yeah 100% I think we, we need to take that into the next game I think with the momentum that we've got now, I think we can, we can just keep going. Clean sheet as well. Yeah, we always, always like those. Excellent. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. First ever clean uh, sheet for Crystal Palace uh, away to Arsenal, which is somewhat surprising. But then again, they've actually got a decent record, haven't they? They've got a decent record. Five. Yeah, they've got a very good record against Arsenal. It seems like Roy has worked Arsenal out. You know, he does put that low block in. Um, and you, you can see the way that Palace played, that they almost thought like, yeah, when you look at the amount of passes that Palace had, in, like Arsenal had in that game, it's almost like Palace weren't really too fussed. And they were waiting for maybe a Wilfred Zaha break, maybe Eze to create something. Because like you said in the first half, Leanne, there, mm. Benteke's link-up play was fantastic. It's just that they didn't do it often enough. But I think Arsenal, um, like Leanne mentioned as well, I should say that, um, they might have been tired from the, the, the Newcastle game, the cup game before. You say that, though. Mm -hmm. Only three players started from that game today. Yeah, but maybe they were tired watching them. <laughs> <laughs> Good comeback, Ian. Um, but, Leanne, I mean, you look at Palace, they were always seen... In fact, to give you credit, Ian, from earlier, you did call them dangerous opponents. Because mm. Palace have taken points off this season, what, Leicester City, Manchester United, Tottenham and, indeed, Arsenal. 
Yeah, I think the thing with Palace, you never really know what Palace are going to turn up, you know. And I think tonight, I thought the game was going to be a little bit more exciting, you know. I was a little bit wrong in that sense. I didn't think there was going to be loads and loads of goals, but yeah. I just think Arsenal are coming off of such a fantastic run. I think, you know, as Ian rightly said, like, with regards to Tierney, He's such a big player for Arsenal. And I think tonight, he was massive. And it's only one player, but mm. as I've said before, he makes such a difference in that team. And the left-hand side tonight just didn't look the same. Even Saka didn't look the same. Mm. Smith-Rowe didn't look the same. It was, it was a strange one. So, but the other players need to step up at some yeah. point. The older players, you know. Mm. I think the young players have carried the team the last few games. Yeah. And sometimes you need other players that need to step up and do a little bit more. Talking of which, and we will to, uh, focus a bit closer to Ainsley Maitland-Niles, who started in at left-back for the absent Kieran Tierney. But let's have a closer look, first of all, at Palace's chances. Yes. I mean, they, of course, came the closest of the two sides. Hitting the crossbar first. Yeah, of all, this was from a free kick what Xhaka gave away, and Tompkins comes in off the back there. He's very unlucky. I think that he just got a little bit, um, little bit under it and he couldn't quite control it, get over it to get the header on. You see him just on the way down almost, trying to direct it maybe to the goalkeeper's um, right, but it didn't quite happen. But this was good play from Eze as well. You know, once he got into this kind of mode, it was really good, him running with the ball. And then once this ball comes in, you're hoping that the goalie's in the right position because, again, Benteke looks like he's heading it. He's got up very well. But again, he looks like he's just on the way down, so it kind of takes the power away there, just on the... On the way down, so the power, it's, a goal, it's a save the goalie should make. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah all day but, long. I think the keeper, it's a, it's a great header, but I think, you know, when we've regards to talk about Xhaka, we'll talk about him a little bit more later, but the type of, like, things that he does and gives away those positions, Palace were capitalising on the deliveries. And as we've seen here in this situation as well, you know, MacArthur's going to be kicking himself tonight that he's not... He wasn't anticipating it, and I think, obviously, because he's not a centre-forward in that position, but that's a great chance that he's missed in that yeah. position. That's, that's all that was missing from the perfect game plan from Roy, wasn't it? Just that... Final touch in that third, just to yeah. nick it, maybe? Yeah, but I think that that's what Palace do. Yeah. I think they've got the players. They've got um, technical players who can get on the ball and maybe try and build a little bit more through Eze. Mm. You know, like when MacArthur was on, you know, through Wilfred Zaha. Some of the times Palace should try and take the initiative and try and play themselves for me. But, like, the way they've done against Arsenal in the last five games now, they seem to have a, a plan for Arsenal. Let's just stay deep. We might get something on the break and we'll go from now. Yeah, should Palace have had a penalty? Wolf Zaha? Yes, I mean, you know, he's probably one of the most foul players in the Premier League. But I think, you know, in this situation, you're always going to be asking for trouble when you get left 1v1. But I'm not quite sure if I think that's a penalty. I think, I think he's gone down a little bit too easily there. And I think if we're going to give penalties for things like that, there's going to be even more penalties given this year than there has been <laughs> in the Premier League. But I don't think that's a penalty. He certainly thinks he should have got one. Ian? I well, the thing is, when you look at that, he's, he's, you know, the bodies have come together and it does look like he's... he's, he's they've got, they've, there's a little tanglement there, mm. an entangling, right? <laughs> but, like, it's not enough for him to go down like he did. I don't think that Rob Holding fouled him. I don't think he fouled him. They came together and as soon as he got to the I box... I mean, he's put his he arm on over. him yeah. and I think in this day and age you genuinely can't do that. Yeah, mm. But I don't think it's enough for it no, to be a penalty. I don't think but so. But we've seen him give him. Yeah, he cut a frustrated figure at points today, didn't he, Wilf Zaha? Well, sometimes, but I think that when you, when you watch Wilford, um, he always seems to be upset for some reason if he's, if he's fouled or even if he, whatever's happening, he just seems to have a kind of perturbed look on his face all the time, <laughs> which I, quite, I find pretty funny every time. If he's fouled, if he's not fouled, he always seems to be intense. You think it's unnecessary sometimes? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah, but like, I think that he's, he's somebody that... I heard him speak the other day talking about... People can maybe misinterpret it for arrogance or stuff, but it's just he says it's the passion, it's what he feels and how he, how, he, how he deals with it. And he does it. It comes out when he's playing. 